Tara, and today we are going to do part one of my entire fragrance collection. Now, I did this last year, um, and I think I'm just going to make it an annual thing where I go through literally every fragrance in my collection at that point, and it will be in July again next year. Um, and so... Basically what I'm doing is I'm breaking it up uh, alphabetically. So today we're starting with uh, fragrance houses that begin with numbers, like 4711, which is the only one I have that begins with a number. But we're gonna start there and then do A, B, C, and D. No wait, and E. We're gonna do A, B, C, D, E today. And then part two will be you know the next set and so on and so forth. Now this year I wanna do it in four parts. I think I did it in five last year and that's a bit much. But the challenge is that I have more fragrances this year. So I'm going to be as succinct as possible with this and still giving you information about each of the fragrances in my collection. Um, and then, uh, because the way I've broken it up, the first three, I think I have close to 60 fragrances that I'm talking about, like 55 to 60, and those three, but then the last one's only like maybe right around 50 or just under. I think in the last one, part four, I'll show you my display again so you can see how everything is organized. Um, so that's basically what we're gonna do. Like I said, we have a lot to get through, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, again, this is alphabetically by house and then also by fragrance. Hopefully that will help you if you're interested in a specific house or fragrance. And we're going to begin with the house of 4711. These are pretty straightforward fragrances, so it's easy to explain because they're very simple. They're, they're light colognes. This first one is called Blood Orange and Basil. And this one was created by Alexandra Kale. And it smells like blood orange and basil. Um, Really nice, uh, refreshing fragrance. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Mandarin Basilic. I prefer Mandarin Basilic by Guerlain, but I mean, for a cheapie, this is really, really nice. The next one up is Lime and Nutmeg. This one was done by Geza Schoen, and again, smells like lime and nutmeg. This one is really refreshing. I actually like this one um, out of the shower, um, or even just kind of when I want like a pick-me-up. This, this just kind of makes me happy, to be quite honest. So that's a good one. This one is a little more soothing. This one's called Myrrh and Kumquat, and again by Alexandra Kale. And um, this one, like I said, it's a little bit uh, more soothing, still has the kumquat sort of uh, citrusy brightness, but the myrrh kind of subdues it and makes it a little bit more of a relaxing scent. And then the last one that I have from 4711 is called Pink Pepper and Grapefruit. This one was done by Cecile uh, Hua, I think is her last name. And this one, again, as you would imagine with that kind of pink pepper spice, uh, it's like bright, a little bit spicy. And then the grapefruit, of course, is like this refreshing citrus. This is another sort of zesty awakening type of fragrance. So those are the four that I have from 4711. Next up are two fragrances from Erin. The first one is called Amber Musk, and this is just a like limited edition bottle is why it looks like that. Um, but I don't know who created either of these. They don't release the perfumers. Either way, I really like both of the fragrances that I have from Erin. So um, Amber Musk, it, I mean, it kind of gives you an idea of what it smells like. It's definitely musky. It has um, Ambroxan in here is what I smell. I think there's a bit of benzoin, maybe even a little bit of, uh, it might be rose, but some sort of like a floral maybe, I think it's probably rose is what it smells like to me. But mostly it's that um, benzoin musky ambroxan, which is a, actually a really nice cozy fragrance. And this lasts pretty well. The other one that I have is Tangier Vini d'Or. I also really like just the, the normal Tangier Vini, but um, I have this particular version. Um, so this has uh, bourbon vanilla. It's like a vanilla fragrance, of course. And then um, again, it's like a little bit of amber, cashmere, and like a woody sort of base to it. And then there's definitely some, I think, myrrh and tonka in here as well. So if you, I mean, if you like a lot of the same notes that I like, um, you know, vanilla, myrrh, tonka, stuff like that, um, benzoin, those style of notes, I think you would really like this one. So maybe check it out. Don't blind buy it because these are kind of pricey, but you know, maybe it will pop up on sale somewhere. I got mine on sale. I got, actually, I think I got this secondhand. Anyway, enough talking. Let's move on. Next up, we have my only fragrance from Amouage at the moment. This is Sunshine Woman. Uh, this was created by Sydney Lancaster. And to me, the main notes are like this apricotty, leathery asmanthus with, um, I think it's like classified as like a white tobacco or something or a tobacco blossom. I don't know exactly, but you kind of get that feel to it with some almond and vanilla. Uh, really love this one, especially for like summer, 
actually days and nights, but maybe a little bit more in the evening. Um, and then next we have my only one from Artiste. This is the Architects Club. This one smells uh, very, 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 very similar to Eau Dwell from uh, Diptyque. And the reason why I kept this over my full bottle of Eau Dwell when I decluttered that was because this one lasts a little bit longer. Um, but if you like Eau Dwell, you're gonna like this. This one was created by Jan Bassnier and it's like a woody vanilla. I would say there's like a little bit of Angelica because it has like a slight greenness to it. I think there's a touch of juniper as well, but mostly it's like a woody vanilla. Really nice one from Arquiste. And then I have two from Atelier Cologne. They're both limited edition bottles. I've decided that I think I'm just gonna get one of these every year as a collection. So the first one up is Love Asmanthus. And of course it's supposed to be an Asmanthus fragrance, but to me, um, mostly it smells like light blue from Dolce & Gabbana. Um, again, I don't know who created this one, but it's got the Osmanthus a little bit, but I get mostly the lemon and the cedar that are in this one. If you like light blue, you'll probably like this. Not necessary to have both, but you know, uh, it's a nice one and the bottle's pretty. And then the other one that I have, this bottle's even more gorgeous, I think. This is Santal Carmi, which I do really, really like this one. This was created by Jerome Epinette. And this is like, obviously sandalwood, but it's like sandalwood vanilla. I think there's saffron in here. Again, a bit of like woodiness, maybe like a little bit of spice too, um, but that's a really nice sandalwood fragrance. And the bottle is freaking gorgeous. Speaking of freaking gorgeous bottles, here are some from Atelier des Ors. The first one up is Short Assange, and this one is just this amazing uh, sort of juicy orangey fragrance. Um, so all of these three that from Atelier des Ors were created by Marie Salome, and I think she does a lot of citrus fragrances really, really well. So this is like this delicious sort of honeyed blood orange, orange blossom thing going on. It has, I think, a little bit of pear in here as well, but uh, it's mostly about the blood orange and it is delicious. It kind of reminds me of like an, a, some sort of like an orange based cocktail. Then of course we have the famous Lune Feline. This one is a beautiful vanilla fragrance. It has Peru balsam, um, cardamom, woods, things like that. Um, smells a little bit, or maybe more than a little bit, by uh, like by the fireplace also created by Marie Salome. Um, but some people do struggle with this one. Some people find it to be a bit challenging, maybe have like a rubbery smell or something animalic to it. I've never gotten that. It's always been incredibly pleasant and cozy and enjoyable for me. Uh, but the, my point is don't blind by this. So that's Lymphaline. And then we have Rouge Sare. I don't know that I can pick a favorite between these three because I love all three of these like so much. So Rouge Sare is one that focuses on the note of dates, like the dried fruit dates. Um, I get a lot of vanilla and cinnamon. Oh, it's delicious. I get a lot of vanilla and cinnamon in this as well. And definitely uh, sort of a plum accord in here. So if you like uh, the idea of like plum, dried fruits, things like that with vanilla and cinnamon, you will probably love Rouge Sare. It's really, really good. The next one is very new to my collection and it's from a house that I've never really even tried before. This is Azaro's uh, Wanted Girl, it's called. And it was created by a whole bunch of people. Like, uh, I think it was Dominique Ropian, Fanny Ball, like 5,000 other people, I don't remember. There's a lot of people that created this one. Anyway, um, this fragrance isn't anything super special. It does have a note of Dolce de Leche. It's just kind of like uh, a sweet, designer fragrance in a way. I would say that it reminds me a bit of uh, Fancy from Jessica Simpson. The reason why I've decided to keep it, and uh, partially this is Amina's fault because she encouraged me because this is just amazing. Look at how this sprays. <laughs> it has like a little trigger here. It's freaking amazing. I don't dislike it. I actually think it's kind of nice. Uh, and if you like really sweet fragrances and the idea of Dolce de Leche, um, and you want a bottle that you can pull a trigger on, <laughs> then check out Azaro Wanted Girl. Next up are two from Banana Republic, and I really, really like these. I've had travel sprays of them, and I just decided to get full bottles. First one is number 78, Vintage Green. This was created by Gino Percantino. So this one has like bergamot, but it's like a uh, very green fragrance. So to me, it smells like there's like green tea, maybe fig, uh, some sort of like a leafy sort of vibe to it. Um, and then I think there's some vetiver as it dries down. I kind of pick up on vetiver. Doesn't last like insanely long, but it lasts all right considering the kind of profile of this fragrance. And uh, this is one of my favorite gym scents of all things. And actually both of these are. So um, I like the vintage green 
to put on before I go work out. And then like once I'm done, I like to put on number 90 pure white. So this one is more of a musky kind of scent. Again, though, it does have like a note of green tea in it. And then I also think this one has vetiver. So it's like um, kind of like citrusy, uh, musky, green tea vetiver kind of thing. But I would say it's more of like a musky kind of fragrance. Oh, and this one was created by Patricia Shu, I believe. Um, so those are my Banana Republic scents. And then uh, the next one up is from BDK. It's the only BDK I still have, and it is called Wood Jasmine. Now this name is uh, very misleading because this one does not smell woody or jasmine-y at all. Well, maybe a little bit woody, but not at all jasmine-y. So this one was created by Camille Le Guay, but to me, the main player here is plum. So I get a lot of plum. Um, I get some sort of like a resinous vibe to it, some incense. Yeah, there's jasmine in here, I'm sure, but I don't really pick up on it. Um, and I would say the other thing that I can kind of pick up is vanilla. So this is a pretty strong fragrance. It definitely lasts and projects. Uh, but if you like plum scents, then it might be something to check out. And it might not have been on your radar since it doesn't say anything about plum. Um, it says wood jasmine, which is not an accurate name. Next up is one from the House of Bordeaux. This one is called Masai Mara. It was created by Philippe Romano, I believe. And to me, this one is, first of all, it's really delicious. I think more sh people should try it. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it, but it's mostly about like dried fruit, plums, and cinnamon to me. I do think there's supposed to be like chamomile in here maybe and something else, but to me, it mostly smells like the, the fruits and the cinnamon. It kind of is a good holiday type of scent, but really delicious if you like kind of a cinnamony fruity gourmands. Uh, check that one out. Then I have two from bond number nine. The first one is the one I got more recently. This is Dubai Indigo. Uh, this one here, I'm not sure who did it, but it's a really nice fruity fragrance again. It's like bergamot, lychee. Um, I think there's a little bit of like florals in here. There could be, I think it's peach in here too, but lots of different fruits essentially. And then a little bit of a woodiness and a muskiness to it. Uh, I think that at least from what I've smelled from bond number nine, they tend to do like fruity, woody, musky scents the best um, because, well, or at least that's the ones, those are the ones I prefer because the other one I have is kind of in the same style, although it doesn't smell really the same. The other one I have is actually the first niche scent I ever I ever bought. And I, I've been wearing this for, I would say, about 10 years now, like obviously not every day, but um, I've had bottles of this for about 10 years now. This is called The Scent of Peace. This one was created by uh, Michelle Americ, and this is, oh, it's so nice. It's just so pretty. This one is like black currant florals, again, a woodiness to it, a little bit of musk. Um, yeah, this is really, really nice. I think there's grapefruit in this one as well, but this is a nice one for spring and summer. I really like this and I get compliments on it. Now, is it the best fragrance in the world? No but it's really pretty. Um, so if you like uh, kind of lighter, uh, like I said, fruity floral musky scents, maybe a little bit of woods, I'm not sure, but I think maybe a little bit in there, um, then check this one out. It's really pretty and light. Next I have one from Byredo. This is called Balde Freak. It's probably one of their most popular, if not the most popular one that they make. Um, a lot of people say this is a really unique fragrance. I disagree because I bought it uh, for the fact that it reminds me of a home scent that I used to use, so it was from the body shop. Uh, Balda Freak was created by Jerome Epinet. I'm not sure what year, but I'm pretty sure it was after the uh, Bath and Body Works oil came out because I used that in like 2003, 2004, um, that era. But this is a really nice vetiver scent. I think there's some bergamot in here. It's also musky um, as well. And I think this one is supposed to have marigold, which I don't normally like, but I don't really pick it up that much in this one. It's mostly about like the vetiver and musk to me. And then the citrus kind of goes away after a while, but really, I mean, I love this scent. It's really nice. It's just, I don't think it's that unique, but that's because I've smelled something that smelled just like it before. Uh, so anyway, let's move on. Next, we have one from Carner Barcelona, and this is called Tardes. I really love this fragrance. Um, this was created by Daniela Andrier, who is the house perfumer for Prada. And this is, oh, this is just such a nice almond fragrance. Now, um, Sam from My World of Fragrance, she did a really great video on almond scents. And I'm, I, if I remember correctly, she talked about this one in there. So um, if you want to check that out, you might be able to learn a little bit more about this fragrance than I can tell you right now. But if you like the note of almond, I think you would really like this one. The other things that really stand out to me in this one 
uh, probably like a bit of tonka. I think there's heliotrope, but that kind of probably complements the uh, the the idea of almond there because heliotrope can kind of smell almondy. And then I think there's some musk in this one as well. All right, next let's do my Carolina Herrera collection. These ones are all from the Confidential uh, line, and the first one up is Amber Desire. This is the newest one that I have from this collection. Not sure the perfumer for this one, but obviously this is an ambery fragrance. I would say it's like amber, vanilla, a little bit resinous, I would think. And then maybe, I don't know, there might be something else in there, but honestly, to me, it's mostly like a vanilla, ambery kind of fragrance. Not that powdery, maybe a tiny bit, but it's really, really good. Uh, so that's Amber Desire. The next one up is Bronze Tonka. And uh, here's that one. Bronze Tonka was created by Philippine Cotieri. I'm sure I just butchered that. Uh, but this one obviously is a Tonka based fragrance. Here in this one, I pick up a lot of the note of coffee. Um, I think there's some saffron in this one as well, which I really, really like, but I get mostly like kind of a coffee Tonka sort of thing going on. The next one is called Mystery Tobacco. And this one was created by uh, my bae, Quentin Beach. <laughs> and this obviously, again, a tobacco kind of fragrance, but this one, there's patchouli in it too. Um, I think there's a little bit of tonka. There's woodiness for sure in here, uh, but I really, really like that one. If you like sort of, I don't know, it's not super sweet, but a little bit sweet, woody, tobacco-y kinds of scents, then I think you would like this one. But there is patchouli in here. It's just not, it's not super, like, it's not dirty or anything, but there is patchouli in here. Um, the next one is Nightfall Patchouli, but this is a, a misnomer because Nightfall Patchouli uh, doesn't really have a really prominent note of patchouli to my nose anyway. I'm not sure who did this one, but to me, this is more about like this sort of vanillic benzoin kind of thing going on and cinnamon. I think there might be florals in here as well. Uh, and there's also tobacco in here. Like I smell tobacco in this one, which is funny because like Mystery Tobacco is the tobacco fragrance, but I get quite a bit of tobacco from Nightfall Patchouli, as well as, like I said, kind of the cinnamon, the benzo, and that kind of thing. The patchouli is not that big of a player, um, not at least until the dry down, but even then, it's not that big of a player. So I love this one, though. This is my favorite from the collection. And then the last one is Saffron Lazuli. I really love this one as well. Obviously, the note of saffron is really prominent in this one. Again, not sure who did this one, unfortunately, but... This is sort of like saffron and leather, I would say. Um, and then again, I think there's some vanilla, but this is less sweet than the others. Not that the others are really overly sweet or anything, but this one is kind of the least sweet of the five that I have anyway. Um, but I still really, really like that one. So if you like saffron, you can check out Saffron Lazuli. Then we have one from Carthusia. This is called Terra Mia. This was created by Luca Maffei. And this is sort of like this hazelnutty coffee sort of um, rose fragrance. This has vanilla for sure, and it smells uh, quite a bit like things like Intense Cafe or um, Rose's Vanille. So if you've smelled those and you like those, you'll probably like this one, but it's a really nice gourmand scent. Next, we have one from Celine, and this bottle is just oh, so stunning. I love it. So this is called Night Clubbing. I also love the name. Again, I don't know who did this one, but this is like, it's, it's a vanilla fragrance, sort of, but it also has this like kind of, uh, it's like a smoky galbanum in a way. There's also a bit of orris in here. It's kind of more along the like a waxy sort of orris to me, at least in my opinion. But the way I describe this fragrance is like a sexy ashtray, which I know probably doesn't appeal to a lot of people, but I think it's amazing. So if you wanna smell like a sexy ashtray, check out Night Clubbing. Next, we're moving into the house of Chanel, and I have four fragrances from Chanel. The first one is this little one here. This is Coco Noir. This is my favorite from the Coco line, and this one was created by Christopher Sheldrake and Jacques Polge. So this is a flanker, obviously, of Coco, and for me, this is like patchouli rose. I kind of get something like a little bit, I don't know, maybe spicy. I think there are some citruses in here as well, but mostly like a rose patchouli kind of fragrance, really nice. Um, and I don't love a lot of the Coco line, especially not the Coco Mademoiselle ones, but I really like Coco Noir. Next we have number five, Eau Premier or Eau Premier. This is, uh, this and the vintage Eau de Cologne are my two favorite versions of Chanel number no. five. So this obviously it has the aldehydes, the florals, but here I think the vanilla maybe is a little bit more prominent. Um, 
and uh, there's like a little bit of musk. It's the, I should say the vanilla is more prominent than in the original, at least I think it is. Um, it's not prominent, like the aldehydes are still the most prominent thing to me. Um, and then the florals probably, and then like the vanilla and musk, but I just think the vanilla might be more prominent in here than the original. Um, so that's again, one of my favorite, or one of my two favorite versions of Chanel number no. five. Then we have number 19, Kudra. This is beautiful. I just got this not too long ago. Um, and this one, oh, sorry, the last one and this one both created by Jacques Polge. So this is like number 19, but the iris is kind of amped up and the green notes are maybe a little bit tamed here. So this is like iris, galbanum. I think there's a bit of vetiver in here. So still kind of a green style iris, but the iris is definitely the, the star of number 19 Poudre to me. Really pretty. Um, I just love this. And then the last Chanel I have also by Jacques Polge is my favorite of all the Chanel's I've smelled so far. This one is called Sycamore. This comes from their Les Exclusives collection. And this one is a vetiver fragrance. It's mostly vetiver to me. But I do get like some aromatics, like a cypress kind of thing or something along those lines. And then I get like maybe a little bit of spice, but like I said, it's mostly vetiver. Um, it's just an amazing vetiver. It's the best vetiver I've smelled thus far. Um, and like I said, it's my favorite Chanel thus far. Although I'm sure there are some others that I'll fall in love with one day. Uh, but anyway, that's my Chanel collection. Next up is my only one from Chloe at the moment, but like heads up, I do have some other Chloe's coming in. They're just not here yet. Um, this one is Chloe Nomad Absolute. Again, Quentin Beach here, very nice job. This one is Mirabelle Plum, um, Oak Moss and Divana. But to me, it just, I don't know, for some reason it reminds me of high school and I have no idea why. Maybe it smells like like Maurice's did back then or Abercrombie Fitch or something. I don't know, I have no idea, uh, but it smells amazing. I really, really like this one. Um, so that one is Nomad Absolute. And now we're going to hit Dior and I have a lot of Dior fragrances, so get ready. So for Christian Dior, first up I have Ombre Nui from the uh, Privé collection. And Ombre Nui was created by Francois Damashi. In fact, Francois Damashi created most of these Dior fragrances, so I'll only say the perfumer if it's not him, okay? Um, so anyway, Ombre Nui is rose and amber, but it's like one of my favorite like ambery rose fragrances. Oh, it's so good. A little bit powdery here, uh, but that's that one. Then I have this amazing fig fragrance. It's called Belayed Sauvage. And this is like fig, fig tree, all that kind of stuff. I think there's some citrus in here. Yeah, and maybe it's like a little bit, a little bit sea-like, a uh, little bit, maybe tiny bit salty, uh, but mostly it's about the fig and it's amazing and I love it. And a lady at the gym said I smelled good when I wore it. <laughs> Anyway, um, next up is Bois d'Argent. Bois d'Argent is one that was actually created by someone else. This was created by Anique Minardo, and this is an iris fragrance. It's like iris, like a woody iris to me. I think there's some myrrh in here, something sweet, a little bit of vanilla. Um, it does have sort of like a little bit of an aromatic quality to me that makes it different from other iris wood like combos that I have, but really, really nice. Love that one. Here's another iris. This is Dior Homme Intense, and we're back to Francois Dimashi. This one is another woody iris, but it has like ambrette that gives it sort of a musky feel to it. And there's also a bit of pear in here. Gosh, and I think vetiver too, but this is, this is amazing. I really want to try the Dior Homme Parfum, but I know that's like insanely difficult to, to find nowadays, at least for a decent price. And then also the Dior Homme Original, but this is fantastic. Um, next, my big boy. Fev, <laughs> so this is Fev Delicious. And this is a great Tonka fragrance. So this is like Tonka and vanilla, um, maybe some caramel. It's got a little bit of a spiciness to it almost from the Tonka, um, but then it dries down a little bit like softer, more powdery. God, I really love this fragrance. I wear it to bed um, and it will still take me forever to finish the remaining half of this bottle, uh, but that's Fev Delicious. And now we have Greedy Or. God, I love this rose fragrance. This collection, like this line is really, really nice. Um, so Greedy Or is like a rose oak moss sort of thing going on. I do think there's a bit of patchouli in here, but I would say rose and oak moss, like a watery rose and oak moss are the main things I get. Um, again, maybe a little bit of woodiness, maybe a bit of citrus, but mostly rose and oak moss and Greedy Or. Here's another Anique Minardo creation. This is Hypnotic Poison. I wore this back in high school. Um, I love this scent. This is another great almond fragrance if you're interested in that. 
It's like vanilla, almond, coconutty. It's pretty sexy and it still performs pretty well even though it's been reformulated. And this is just an EDT, so that's Hypnotic Poison. And then I have two more Dior's. Like I said, I have a lot here. This next one is discontinued. It is uh, Miss Dior Le Parfum. And I heard about this from Amina from Experiencing Fragrances with Amina. I already mentioned her once in this video. Uh, but this one is also a pretty sexy fragrance. This is like an ambery patchouli sort of scent. And I do think that there's maybe rose and vanilla in here as well, but I would say it's more about like the amber and patchouli. So that is Miss Dior Le Parfum. And then last but not least, we have Spice Blend, which is the newest addition to my Dior collection. So this one is delicious. It's like a boozy rum with obviously lots of spices. I think there's like pepper. Um, it smells like there might be like a little bit of ginger, maybe something herbal in here, but lots of different spices, maybe some like woodiness to it as well. Uh, this one doesn't project a ton, but it sits a little closer to skin. It does last a while though, and it smells amazing. Um, so that one is Spice Blend, great fragrance from Dior. Next up is my only Christian Louboutin fragrance. This one is called Luby Rouge. God, the bottle's so big, I have to hold it further away. <laughs> um, so this one, it kind of smells like a woody iris to me, but I believe the notes of this one are iris, vanilla, and cardamom. You definitely get all three of those, but I would say there's like a woodiness to it as well. It smells a lot like um, Bois de Iris from Van Cleef and Arpels, if you've ever smelled that, like a lot, a lot nearly identical. Uh, but anyway, I really, really like it, but the bottle is also really cool. Um, super heavy, by the way. I, it's one of the heaviest in my entire collection, and you'd probably kill somebody with it. But that is Louis Rouge. Oh, and this one is another Marie Salomon creation, by the way. Um, and then we have one from Clean Reserve. This is the only one I have from Clean Reserve. This is called Radiant Nectar. I love this fragrance. It's a beautiful, um, refreshing pear fragrance. It's like pear and brett. It's definitely musky, maybe like a little bit of cedar in here as well. But to me, it's mostly about the pear and it, the ambrette, and it lasts fairly well considering it is a lighter fragrance. It's just, it's so good. Um, so I've overlooked this house, but this one is fantastic. So if you ever get a chance to sample that, check out Radiant Nectar. Then we have two from Diptyque. I have first Philosicos, another fig fragrance here. So Philosicos was created by Olivia Jacobetti, and this one is like all the aspects of the fig tree. So like the fig leaves, the fig tree, like the bark, the actual fig fruit. So it's like all that going on. I do think there's some coconut in this one, but mostly it's all about, like I said, the fig tree itself, including the fruits. Um, this lasts really, really well. I wore this yesterday as my scent of the day and I could smell all day long. So fantastic, really great for summer. And then the other one I have is Volutes. This one, if you like tobacco, you gotta check this one out. So Volutes was created by Fabrice Pellegrin. And by the way, this is an EDP. This one is just an EDT. Um, I don't think they make Volutes in an EDT, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so like I said, this is a very tobacco-y kind of fragrance. It's a bit sweet because I think there's honey in here. There might be cinnamon, um, maybe something like a little bit resinous a little bit woody. I think there might be iris in this as well, if I remember correctly, but this is just great if you like that style of like to, like slightly sweet tobacco -y kind of fragrance. Check out the Lutes. Moving on to Dolce & Gabbana. I don't think I need to tell you too much about this one, but this is uh, light blue, the intense version, but it pretty much smells pretty close to the same. This was created by Olivier Cresp. You know, it has your, the like normal notes of light blue. So there's like lemon, apple, you have like a woodiness to it, musky, of course. Uh, you smelled it a million times, but I still really like the way it smells. So that's light blue, the intense version, it just lasts a little bit longer. Um, and then we have this one here. I, I love this fragrance. This is Velvet Amber Skin. First of all, the color of this cap, it's like velvety, but that mustard yellow is just, it's amazing. Um, but the scent itself is beautiful. I don't really hear anybody talk about this one, but this is like amber, vanilla, resins. It's so warm, um, but not heavy. Like it's not, it's not like a typical like wintry kind of amber. I would say you could pull this one off in the summertime, but it still has that warmth. I definitely need to wear this one more often. I really love it. Um, but again, it's called Velvet Amber Skin. And this one was created by Christophe Reynaud, I think. The next house you all know I love. And if you've watched my videos, somewhat regularly. You probably know that this is one of my favorite fragrances in my entire collection. This is from the House of Decida and it is called Isara. And if I were to have a signature scent, it would be this one. So Isara is mostly to me about like Tonka, Pine. Oh, it's so good. There's like Vetiver. I think there's Oak Moss in here too. A um, little bit of Musk, a little bit of Ambergris in here. 
but mostly I would say tonka and pine are the things that stand out to me the most. Um, it doesn't sound like a gourmand and I wouldn't call it a gourmand by any means, but if you like gourmands, I think you might like Isara. You might not, if, if you don't like pine, you won't like it. But um, God, I just love this one. It's like sweet, but also earthy. Um, it's unique, but calming. God, I just, I freaking love this scent. It's so good. Uh, so that's Isara from Dusita. And then um, I also have Moonlight in Chiang Mai. By the way, both of these are, well, the whole collection is created by Pissara Umavijani. Um, she is the owner and perfumer for Dusita. And uh, Moonlight in Chiang Mai is an interesting one. So here's the bottle real quick. I already took the cap off, but um, this one, it's like a yuzu fragrance. It's like yuzu, I get like a teak wood kind of thing I think is in here. Again, I think there's some vetiver, but to me this kind of has like a Baccarat Rouge sort of vibe. It doesn't smell just like it, but it kind of has that vibe. So if you do like Baccarat Rouge 540, then there's a good chance you'll like Moonlight Chiang Mai. And you actually might like it more because it's not as sweet. Um, I don't think this has saffron at all, but it does have that vibe. So if you want a good yuzu fragrance um, and you do like Baccarat Rouge or that sort of style, then check out Moonlight Chiang Mai. Next up, I have two from Elizabeth and James. And right now these are pretty affordable on discounter sites, but I think they're discontinued. So I don't know how long that's going to last. This one is called Nirvana Amethyst. And this one mostly features the note of tobacco. It's kind of like a, a cedary tobacco. And then I think there's honeysuckle in here as well. Uh, but it's like a little bit sweet. It's really comforting. Uh, I, I like this for bed. The other one that I have is called Nirvana Bourbon. And this one is mostly about the bourbon vanilla but then it also has notes of like a sort of creamy tuberose that doesn't really stand out that much. But to me, it also has a very distinct woodiness like oak. So it's like a woody vanilla. So if you like woody vanillas, uh, this again, a great affordable option. Then we have one from Essential Parfums. I just did a live on this recently if you wanna check that out, but, uh, or I mean the whole house. But this one is their Rose Magnetic created by Sophie LeBay. This is beautiful. So this is like a watery rose with lychee, kind of like a, a fruity watery rose. But then there's also like a bit of like cedar musk. I'm sure there's, uh, you know, something in here. There's something in here that sweetens it up a little bit, but it's definitely mostly like a, a fruity watery rose with that lychee in there. Um, it's kind of, I mentioned in the live, like sort of between Stella and Parfum de Marly uh, Delina, but I would say it's much closer to Stella in my opinion, because it is very much a watery kind of rose. Beautiful though, I love this fragrance, this is so good. Um, and very affordable, $75 for 100 mils. All right, just two more that we're going to cover today. And the next one is from Etat Libre d'Orange and this is called Fat Electrician. Name is fantastic. My dad's also an electrician, so that appeals to me as well, even though he's not fat. Um, you know, just a little bit of a beer belly. <laughs> but uh, anyway, this one, oh, this is another great vetiver fragrance. This one is maybe a little bit spicier. I think there's vanilla in here. Definitely sort of like a resinous, like maybe myrrh sort of thing going on, but Gosh, this is, this is fantastic. The longevity is not fantastic. I don't care. This smells amazing. So that's Fat Electrician from Etat Libre d'Orange. And the last one we're going to talk about today is from Exidolo. This one is called Love and Crime, and this is just a delicious gourmand. Oh, and by the way, I forgot. Uh, Antoine Mason Du did this one from Etat Libre d'Orange. I have no idea who did this one from Exidolo. But anyway, back to Love and Crime. This is a uh, like orangey, mandarin, uh, vanilla sort of combo, sugary, like sweet. And I think there's cacao in here too, but this smells to me like an orange cakey kind of fragrance. It's similar, very similar to Lyra from Zerjoff. So if you have Lyra, you do not need this. I have both because I love them both. The main difference to me is that Lyra pulls more like a lemon cake on my skin, whereas this does go more in the orangey direction. Um, so that's kind of the main difference between the two, but they're both great fragrances. Um, so again, that's Exidolo, Love and Crime. All right, holy crap. I literally have no clue how long I've been sitting here talking, but those are close to 60-ish fragrances uh, for today. And the next video we'll do letters F through K. So if you're interested in any houses that start with that range of letters, be sure to stay tuned for that. Um, and then we'll continue on until we're completely done. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you like this video. Please give it a thumbs up, if for no other reason than because I put a lot of effort into this video. Um, but please do give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and don't forget to hit that notification bell, whichever side it's on. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.